What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Eurozone, and welcome, finally, to some Mechanophobia. Um, Tales from the Peterplex number four. Welcome to my audiobook. I have completely messed up this intro, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> we are getting straight into the first story, some Mechanophobia, today. I am sorry that I am a week late, but uh, hopefully you understand that uh, it's been quite a busy time. I hope you all had a, a good Christmas and New Year's. And uh, yeah, we're going to get straight into Summer Kind of Phobia, which came out on the 27th of December. What a great Christmas gift, because this is the best book of all time. I am telling you, it is so freaking good. I'm so passionate about how good this book is. So um, let's get straight into this one. This is a pretty good story, I would say. Uh, and something of note is that on the title page where it says Summer kind of Phobia with like the glitchy background or whatever, um, it says Grand Reopening, Freddy's Fantasy Water Park is now open. Buy one ticket, get the second half off, family's welcome. I have no idea why that's suddenly there. They've never done that before uh, in any of the books, but uh, that's a cool little detail. Anyway, let's get into it. This is a very long book, so uh, let's get straight into this. Bam, bam, bam. Hey kid, you're not supposed to be here. Bam, bam. Don't hit the glass, please. Caden Wachowski called from a few feet away beside the main centre of attraction. What the owner called Freddy's Sea Life Mech Aquarium. It was the only place in Freddy's Fantasy Water Park that held underwater animatronics. Caden had marvelled when he first saw the large swimming mechanical underwater creatures. A sea dragon, two sea serpents, a few sharks, assorted fish, a mermaid and a vintage scuba diver. The tank also displayed a Fors undersea scene with coral plants and seashells. The little kid must have snuck through the maintenance section to see the animatronics up close. Guests were only supposed to see the mech aquarium from the outer attractions. Um, why don't... Sorry, I completely messed up. Why won't the dragon look at me? The kid whined. Look at me, dragon! The little kid wore red swim trunks, a yellow Freddy's Fantasy Water Park t-shirt, and, if it lets me, uh, flip-flops, and likely had wandered off from his chaperone. Because the dragon's not real, kid, it's an animatronic. Now, go on back to your family. They're probably wondering where you are. This place sucks! The kid slapped the glass again. Hey! Caden stalked toward him. That's enough. The kid spat out his chewing gum on the glass and spun around and shot Caden straight in the chest with a clear plastic water handgun, twice, stopping Caden in his tracks, then ran off toward the doorway that he wasn't supposed to enter in the first place. Caden sighed, wiped a hand down his wet work polo, and watched the big wad of pink gum slowly slide down the tank's glass. He took out a rag from his pocket, leaned down, and wiped it off the wad. Then he huffed air on the glass and tried to clean the surface the best he could. Hey there, Wachowski! How's it going? Caden quickly straightened when he heard Martin Copper's voice. Martin was the owner of Freddy's Fantasy Water Park and his new boss. Caden gave a nod, clearing his throat. Ahem. <clears throat> Good, Mr. Copper. <laughs> uh, Martin smiled and waved a dismissive hand in the air as he made his way to him. Call me boss, will ya? I don't know what these accents are, I'm just going with the flow. Caden tried not to stare at his wide grin. Um, sure boss. Martin Copper was an, ex uh, was an ordinary middle-aged man of average height and built with uh, thinning salt and pepper hair. The only eye-catching trait about him was his smile, which he'd apparently spent a lot of money on. His teeth were large, bright ivory, and capped straight to perfection. When he grinned, it was hard to ignore those pearly whites. Walk with me, there. Walk with me, Wachowski. Martin commanded, and Caden strolled with him along the narrow pathway around the circular tank. The sea serpents, one faded purple and the other pale pink, slid by Martin as he walked by, their snake-like bodies writhing beside the glass. Roy, his co-worker, had nicknamed them Marco and Polo because they often hid in obscure spots in the tank. They can be kind of creepy sometimes, eh? Martin said. Caden nodded with a forced smile, looking away from the animatronics toward the surrounding water park. 
The crowd was sparse for a Friday, but they'd just reopened a week ago. The water park was structured like a giant wheel around the Mech Aquarium. To the north was the main entrance and the park's office. To the west were... Bonnie's Sea Ponds. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> there's gotta be some sea bonnies there. With two kiddie pools and the main diving pool. To the south was Freddy's Treasures and Eatery, and the pier to get on Chica's ferry boats. To the east were Foxy's Island water slides, and tucked in between the clear tubed water slides and game area were the employee lounge and maintenance workshop. Chica's ferry boats flowed along the sm small stream that separated the water attractions from the mech aquarium. At the moment, the boats were filled with a few kids who were squirming to get as close to the animatronics as possible. Caden knew that Martin discouraged this. The animatronics were pretty worn down with chipped paint, rusted spots, and a few broken pieces that you couldn't really notice until you, unless you were up close. Sorry. The water park had been popular years ago, but it had been closed for years until Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex opened two towns over. Martin was hoping to coast off the success of the Pizzaplex, but he hadn't put any money into renovating the place. It was Caden's job to try to keep the prized attractions up and running which was turning out to be harder than he anticipated. Managing the mech aquarium was the only job with decent wages he could manage in Meadow Brook without some extra schooling. School hadn't been a pleasant experience for him, and he'd always learned best by working with his hands. Martin sniffed and pulled at his nose. I know I told you already, but I need the tank kept clean, Wachowski. Spotless! <laughs> um, Martin talked with his hands. When he was making a point, he'd stab the air or slice in front of him as if wielding an axe. Caden wondered if he knew how intense he seemed. This mech aquarium is the bread and butter of the whole park. I need it to have a big comeback. He bared his teeth and pointed to a copper-coloured tooth on the side of his mouth. I gotta pay off this dental work. Real copper. You get it? Caden nodded. Nice. Um, yeah, miss, um, boss... I check the water chemical levels every night and make sure everything's running smoothly along with the other pools. Good, good. And when an animatronic breaks, you gotta fix it right away. No messing around. When the, animatro when the attraction's closed, the people don't come and I lose money. And if I lose money, no jobs for anyone. Get it? I don't know why he suddenly turned British, but whatever. I like it. I like the British version. Caden nodded at the finger pointed in his face. Understood. I'll fix it right away, boss. I hired you because of your mechanics background stuff. You took those shop classes in high school, right? Yep, took the hands-on mechanic courses, and I had that summer job where I worked on the mini animatronics at Penguin Pizzeria. I'm good with fixing things. My grams always said so. Caden gla glanced into the tank, scanning the swimming animatronics, and scratched his head. He realised he couldn't see the mermaid. Uh-oh. As if Martin had read his thoughts, he stopped walking and stared into the tank. Wait a darn minute, the mermaid? Where's the mermaid? He leaned his flat forehead against the tank's thick glass and looked down. Caden followed his gaze. There at the bottom of the mech aquarium, laying on a rock, was the mermaid. Her arms were crooked. Her eyes were wide open, with one socket pitch black as one eyeball was missing. Her mouth was agape as if she had drowned. The mermaid's down, Wachowski. I repeat, Wachowski, the mermaid is down. Martin shook his head, rubbing a hand on the back of his neck. Shut it down and get her fixed. Gosh, gosh darn it. Then Martin stormed off in a tizzy, waving his hands around in the air. The more times I close it, the more money I lose, he muttered. Get her fixed, Wachowski. Sure, boss. Kanon spoke quietly. Not a problem. R r right away. I can do this. Caden quietly muttered to, to himself as he climbed up the ladder to the enclosed platform that surrounded the top of the mech aquarium. I am fearless. His grams always told him that using positive affirmations could help, uh, could help him get through tough situations. It had helped while growing up, but he was discovering the worst to be inadequate for his new job. I am brave. He looked across the park and spotted Roy, closing down Chica's ferry boats and offering free coupons to visitors to play games. Caden reached for the wetsuit hanging on a hook and realised his hand was shaking. He curled his hand into a fist and opened it, then grabbed the wetsuit used for diving into the mech aquarium. 
He licked his dry lips and tried to get his breathing under control as he felt his air starting to thin. He shut his eyes and shook his head. I can breathe fine. I can, I can do this. He stripped down to his swim trunks and pulled on the snug suit and zipped it up. I'm not a little kid anymore. He was, nine, eh. he was 19 and on his own with Graham's bills piling up. She'd raised him since he was six, and it was his responsibility to, ca to, to take care of their house while she stayed in the nursing home. It was the last thing she'd told him when she was being taken away in the ambulance for accidentally hurting herself after an episode of early-onset Alzheimer's. It was important to her to keep her home, and he wasn't about to let her down. He needed this job, so he needed to be able to do the job. He walked over to the mech aquarium controls and shifted the power lever. The hum of electricity clicked off. Then he pushed the button to pull back the blue tarp across the top of the tank. He heard the slow hum as the mechanical cover retreated. The strong chemicals in the water floated up into the air. Caden slipped his feet into the di di diving fins, hefted on the heavy air tank, hooked his tool pouch to the carabiner on his suit, and slipped the goggles onto his head. He gazed down into the water and saw the shadows of the unmoving animatronics floating below him. A tremor radiated down his back. His feet felt heavy, as if they were glued onto the platform. He lifted his legs one at a time to get them moving, then rolled his stiff shoulders. Whenever he shut down the animatronics' power, the sea creatures stopped in different areas of the mech aquarium. Some were floating at the top, some in the middle and others sank to the false seafloor. This would be only his second time inside the tank. The first time, he'd ducked under the water and swam above the animatronics, too scared to get close to them. He wasn't all that sure he could go further down to the bottom, but this time he had to. Had to. Hopefully this was just a motor issue. The main operating system of the motors was simple, just a bit of wiring and a reset button that could be pressed in a tank, if anything was seriously wrong, the animatronic would have to be hauled out to be fixed. He was pretty sure Martin would flip out if another animatronic needed to be removed from the tank though. Caden sat down on the edge of the platform, slipping his fins into the water. I can do this. Everything will be fine. Please let everything be fine. He pulled the goggles down over his eyes, put the breathing regulator into his mouth, and before he could stop himself, slid into the cold water. The chill of the water hit him first, as he sunk straight down, right in front of the face of a shark's wide open mouth with huge, sharp, rusted teeth. Caden's eyes widened as a wave of panic slammed into him. His heart hit against his chest, and he momentarily forgot where he was. All he saw was the terrifying mechanical shark and black oblivion waiting down its throat, he waved his arms erratically, trying to get away. He whirled and slammed into the vintage scuba diver, tangling him with its arms. It was grabbing him, holding him. Ah! His mouth opened with a scream, releasing the breathing regulator. Water gushed down his throat. He shoved up toward the surface, burst through the water, scrambling to the edge, and pulled himself out of the tank. He rolled over onto the side, choking out water and gagging. His chest felt like he was going to burst open, and his body shook with tremors. He ripped off his goggles and took a moment to control his breathings as the blur of terror slowly faded away. Water dripped into his eyes and he blinked. He suddenly realised where he was and what he was doing. He was at his job at the fantasy water park. He was diving into the mech aquarium to fix the mermaid. There was nothing that could hurt him in the aquarium. He was safe. Oh man, he muttered to himself as he closed his eyes. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Ever since he was younger, Caden suffered from some mechanophobia, the fear of machines while underwater. After Caden's parents were lost at sea during a second honeymoon, Caden had entered therapy. When he went to live with Grams and went back to school, everything seemed fine. For a time, he was making his way back into normal life, until the one fated day that he referred to as the second grade field trip gone totally wrong. It turned out his parents' death had left him with an unshakable fear of underwater machines. He didn't even know for certain what had happened to his parents, but his brain just decided that underwater mechanics were involved, and that fear had never gone away. After the field trip incident, he was teased for the rest of his school years. 
No matter how well he did on the field or how nice or quiet he was, his classmates had never forgotten, and they, in turn, never let him forget. For years, Caden wanted to leave, to run away, but he couldn't just leave Grams, so he'd stuck it out, and he'd found ways to cope. Maybe he had even hoped, wished, dreamed that one day his parents might have come to him, or might come home to him, sorry. And he was still terrified, and he didn't understand why. During his episodes, it was as if all common sense was ripped out of him, and he became this pile of fear and helplessness. His therapist, Dr. Marx, thought he possibly had imagined his parents' plight so vividly that it had caused the phobia. But Dr. Marx had also said it was just a clinical guess. Just a guess. It was hard to cure something when you had no idea what it stemmed from in the first place. Though therapy hadn't given him the answers he needed, it had taught him a few techniques to endure his phobia. He'd learned to avoid the fear. Avoidance wasn't always the best way to solve a problem, he knew, but it was the only thing that helped. That was why, uh, that was why he loved building and fixing things. When he dug into a project, it distracted him from the harder times in his life. Caden sat on the edge of the platform until he calmed down, slowly breathing in and out. He plotted out a pathway to the mermaid at the other side of the tank that would allow him to avoid all the other mechanical sea creatures. That would be his clear path in and out. With a plan in place, Caden forced back his fear and slipped into the water before he could change his mind. He spotted the huge green sea dragon a few feet away as he sank. It was the largest of the animatronics, with scary metal spikes down its back and tail. Caden's pulse fluttered as he dived down straight for the mermaid. His adrenaline spiked and he wanted to rush, to hurry, and to get out and away from the animatronics. Stay calm, he told himself. Hold steady. Diving wasn't meant to be done fast. He had to pace his breathing and regulate pressure, and tried to clear his mind. Strangely, whenever he went underwater, an odd static noise filled his head. You would think it would be silent under the water, but it seemed that the white noise was just another thing he didn't understand about his phobia. As he swam further down, he could feel his gut tighten. He eyed the long-tailed sea serpent Marco, staring at him from a few feet away. The animatronic was powered down, but the eerie way the sea serpent stared directly at him made Caden feel like he was being stalked, watched. For a second, he thought he noticed a flicker of yellow light in its eyes. The power is off, he reminded himself, as he finally reached the mermaid, whose eyes he thankfully could not see. He unsealed the compartment panel on the mermaid's back and tightened a loose wire. He flicked the button to reset the machine, and her arm suddenly waved around. Caden flinched, hitting the aquarium glass with his air tank. The panic came clawing back. When the mermaid settled back down, he forced the anxiety away and moved again. He gazed at the tank wall, making sure he hadn't damaged it. He closed up the mermaid, slid the screwdriver into his pouch, and swam as fast as he could to the surface. He swam as if someone was right behind him, ready to chomp his fins with sharp metal teeth. He couldn't shake the feeling that the sea dragon was watching his every move. Caden yanked himself up onto the platform, pulled off all his equipment, and hurried to the power lever dripping water onto the platform. Come on, work! He pulled the lever up to power on, and turned to look at the tank. The animatronic's eyes lit up, and slowly they began to swim around the mech aquarium. Caden gazed down at the mermaid as she swam at the bottom, moving her arms and tail around. Her faded red hair waved through the water. His shoulders sagged with relief. I did it. He scrubbed a hand down his face and through his wet hair, then he stripped down to his swim trunks, dried off, and started to organise his diving equipment. Martin hadn't told him how to care for anything, but Caden had always been a stickler for a clean shop and work environment. He'd researched how to take care of diving equipment and the proper ways to use it. Every tool, every piece of equipment has a designated place, so he knew where it was when he needed it. He always refilled the air tank no matter how full it was. He wiped down the goggles and hung the fins and tool pouch on a section of the wall. He set the breathing regulator in a clean box. When he was dressed and everything was set to rights, he left to let Eva, the office manager, know that the mech aquarium and ferry boats were back in business. Score one for Wachowski. However, 
With how exhausted he felt, it didn't seem like much of a win at all. Aha. Allow me to just have a quick drink. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, Caden. Caden swiveled around to see his co-worker Roy walking toward him. Nearly a decade and a half older than Caden, Roy always looked like he had just rolled out of bed with dark hair that always stuck up in crazy directions. Relatable. His uniform was usually too small and wrinkled. You wouldn't know it by its appearance, but Roy managed to be an all-star employee at the water park. He knew how to run every game booth, cooked a mean hot dog on a stick, and was also the park janitor. When Caden had asked him how he managed to do it all, Roy told him he used to come to Freddy's fantasy water park as a kid and loved every part of the park experience. This was his dream job. Yeah, Roy? Uh, Caden swirled the water tube, checking the levels of chemicals in the kiddie pool at Bonnie's sea ponds before any of the little kids jumped in. Roy flung a thumb over his shoulder. Think Hank's down. Caden expelled a weary breath and dumped the small tube of water back in the pool. Hank was the shark with the rust spot in the shape of a hammer on its tail. Hank the Hammer, Roy liked to call him. He'd named the other two sharks, Mac the Muscle and Sly, the latter of whom always managed to sneak around the false sea rocks and plants. Zeus was, of course, the sea dragon. Delilah was the mermaid. Frank was the diver. And Marco and Polo were the serpents. Got it. Thanks. Roy scratched at the whiskers on his chin. One job I couldn't land here at the park was the techie one. Not the best with puzzles. Don't think I could swim with that air tank either. Caden shrugged. You do everything else here, Roy. You had to leave a job for someone else. Roy grinned, showing yellow teeth, and expelled a snorting laugh that was unique to just him. Yeah, guess I had to leave something for you to do. What I wouldn't give to have your job, though. Swimming around with Zeus and Delilah. Now that would be mind-blowing. Caden let out a nervous laugh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, buddy, you go do your thing. I'll make that announcement that the mech aquarium and fairy boats will be down for a bit. Get Hank back up and running with the rest of them. Thanks, will do. Caden gave him a thumbs up, put away the water testing kit, and took off toward the mech aquarium. He walked by a few patrons in the park. The day was slightly overcast, but the sun usually burned away the gloom at lunch. A couple of kids were holding bright balloons as they ran around. Parents were scolding the children not to run. A few seagulls were fly flying above, spying for dropped food, and the coo of pigeons could be heard, along with the park music playing through the speakers. No way! Caden Wachowski! You're working here! Caden came to a halt. Oh no. Unfortunately, he knew that voice. He turned around to see his old classmate, Darrell Cunningham, with Yasmin Mendoza and a little girl at her side. It had been a year since they'd graduated, and Caden had hoped to never see his, ne his nemesis again, but it was hard to avoid anyone in Meadowbrook. Caden gave a fake smile and combed a nervous hand through the top of his hair. Daryl, hey Yasmin, how's it going? Hi Caden, we didn't know you worked here, Yasmin said with a toss of her wavy black hair. That's cool. Are you kidding me? Daryl spat out. A water park was the last place I thought Kanan Wachowski would turn up. Daryl hadn't changed a bit. Honey blonde hair, slim and well dressed. But what you couldn't see from looking at him was his mean streak. Daryl had instigated many rounds of the name calling, shoves and beatings that Kanan had suffered over the years. All because of Kanan's stupid phobia that had only acted up on that one field trip. Kids never forgot that kind of stuff. Caden looked down at the little girl who was sucking on a lollipop. Who's this? Oh wait. Oh, never mind. I thought it was the girl speaking. Who's this? Yasmin put her hand on her shoulder. My little sister, Marie. We brought her to the park to see the sea creatures, but looks like you guys are shutting it down. Figures, Dow said with a sneer. This place is such a dump. Why'd they even reopen? The mega pizza plexes are so much better. I went to one by our school. It puts this place to shame. Then Daryl hocked a loogie and spat on the ground. Real quick, 
Uh, yes, I did put emphasis on Mega Pizzaplexes. Because that's a reveal. <laughs> that's just a reveal that happens. There are multiple Mega Pizzaplexes. I mean, we kind of assumed that. But if this takes place in the game's timeline, then that would mean that uh, probably... I mean, maybe the entirety of Tales is canon. Or is in the same continuity. Uh, because that's now possible with the fact that there are multiple Mega Pizzaplexes. So there, there can be, like, things that contradict in these books. But that that's, like fine because we have multiple of the mega pizza plexes i'm talking too much <laughs> yeah well kanan said hopefully it won't be closed too long just have to get in the tank and restart one of the animatronics he looked at marie then you'll be able to see them swim around again okay dawa's eyes widened with a twist of his mouth wait what you're the technician here Holy cow, now I really must be dreaming. You hear this, Yasmin? Caden gets in the actual water to fix the animatronics. Is there a puddle under your feet? Then he snickered, his shoulders bunching up, just like when he laughed at Caden in school. We must have woken up in a different reality today. Wait till I tell the guys. Caden crossed his arms as frustration tightened his fists. Yeah, well, people change. Gotta start making a living. What are you doing these days, Daryl? Daryl straightened his shoulders and very slightly stuck out his skinny chest. Came down for the three-day weekend from school. Yasmin and I both got into the same university. We're going to school to get real jobs after we graduate. Caden shrugged. Yeah, well, school's not for everyone. More like everyone's smart enough. Oh, shoot, I said that wrong. More like not everyone's smart enough. Right, Wachowski? Caden frowned at him. I was sorry to hear about your grandmother, Caden. Um, Yasmin cut in, her brown eyes sincere. Yasmin was one of the kids who'd actually been nice to him, but she'd always hung out with Daryl and a group of jerks, so he always steered clear of her too. Thanks. She's doing okay now. There are people watching her around the clock. He glanced up across the park and pretended to see Martin. Oh, there's the boss. Well, I gotta get back to work. Nice seeing you. Yasmin said, and Caden took off as fast as he could. Don't get eaten by the animatronics, Daryl called out, snickering. And be sure to use the bathroom first. Caden <laughs> just shook his head, seething with irritation. Caden <laughs> rubbed at his chin, studying the mech aquarium from the outside of the glass. It was definitely Hank the Hammer that was down. In fact, the animatronic was flipped over, floating in the middle of the tank like a dead fish. How the heck did that happen? He wanted to know. And how was he going to flip Hank over again? He rubbed a hand down his face. He took a couple of big breaths and climbed up the ladder to the platform. Breathe in, breathe out. Man, he felt a little nauseated about the idea of going back in again. His palms were even beginning to sweat. But this was his job. A job he probably wouldn't have taken if he, if he had realised just how many times the mechanical critters would break down but there weren't that many jobs for fresh out of high school mechanics within driving distance of Graham's house, and so he'd taken what he could get and hoped that facing his deepest fears daily would somehow allow him to overcome the phobia. So far, if we're just making it worse. He stepped up and onto the platform and walked over to the power lever to shut off the main power. He heard the vibration of the tank shift and settle to off. Then he pushed the button to open the tarp as he got his diving gear on. He walked around the mech aquarium trying to find the best pathway down to avoid the other animatronics. Unfortunately, this time, the machines seemed to be spread out all over and at every angle. He would have to swim around at least one of them to get to Hank. Great. He blew out a frustrated breath. Come on, I can do this. There's nothing to worry about. He figured the lesser evil was to swim through some random fish in order to get to Hank. Caden sat down on the edge with his gear on, slipped on his goggles, put in his breathing regulator, and slid into the cold water. He first swam above the other two sharks a few feet below him. Mac the Muscle was dark blue and the biggest of the three. Swimming over its large body sent a shiver down Caden's back. Sly was light blue and smaller, with beady eyes and a small tail. Hank was just plain grey. Caden kicked down toward the school of fish and pushed through them. Each time he brushed against one, it was like being zapped with dread. He broke through the wall of fish with his heart pounding and swam over to Hank. Unfortunately, 
With Hank upside down, Caden couldn't reach the panel on the back from here. He would have to swim under the shark to fix him. Sheesh. It was like every time he got into the tank, there was some other obstacle to overcome. Caden swam under the shark and, like a scaredy cat, jerked back out again. His breathing was rushed and erratic. The pressure of having the mechanical shark over him freaked him out. Breathe in, breathe out, he chanted in his head as he tried to calm himself. Caden looked out through the mech aquarium and noticed the visitors weren't paying much attention to the tank. Thank goodness. He caught something in the side of his vision and whirled around to spot Zeus, the sea dragon, a few feet away, with its mouth slightly open. Where the heck, where the heck had he come from? Not only was the sea dragon the biggest animatronic, but it was also the scariest. Small clawed hands and feet were attached to the large body. Wings jutted from the sides of its reptilian body. Sharp teeth speared out from its huge jaw. Just looking at the creature from outside the tank could trigger one of Caden's panic attacks if he stared at it too long. He didn't remember seeing Zeus anywhere near Hank, but he'd been so worried about getting to Hank, maybe he hadn't noticed before. Who knew? His mind was all over the place. Just get the job done. Like Bob the Builder. Um, quickly, he shifted under Hank, opened the panel with a screwdriver, and focused on problem solving. He checked the wires, fiddled with them, making sure nothing came loose, then pushed the reset button. Hank shuddered and jerked its tail. Caden lurched back, waiting for the shark to settle back down, and then rushed to shut the panel and seal it closed. He turned to swim up to the surface, but came to a stop. Zeus was now floating right in front of him. Caden swam quickly back from Zeus until he crashed into something hard, Caden checked behind him. He collided into a wall of sea rock. He jerked his attention back to Zeus. Somehow the terrifying sea dragon was even closer to Caden, sending a tremor vibrating through his whole body. But how? The power was off. There was no way the sea dragon could move without the power on. It was all metal. If it were to move at all, it would only be because a cable had snapped and it had stunk to the bottom. But how did it get so close? What the heck's going on? Caden watched the sea dragon. It got even closer. Oh no. Caden looked around, scanning for a way out. The dragon came to an abrupt stop right at Caden's head, pinning him to the wall. The tip of its scaled snout was directly in front of Caden's face. The huge, sharp teeth were close enough to chomp him. Caden wanted to scream. His chest was rising up and down. His back was glued to the sea wall. He tried not to suck in too much air and make himself dizzy. He was going to die. He was absolutely frozen with terror. Someone help me. Kenan wanted to look anywhere else, but he found himself staring into the dragon's open mouth. It wasn't looking so good. Some of the teeth were broken off. The brain, pa uh, the brain paint? The green paint on the scales had rubbed off on areas along its head. Black oil had stained the sides of its mouth over the years, and in the dimness of the tank it reminded Caden of dried blood. He didn't know how long he was frozen, pinned against the sea rock by the animatronic. Caden finally noticed some type of dirty wiring hanging out of the bottom teeth. Focus on the wire, focus on the technical, he told himself. I can fix this. Caden stared at the wire until the terror clawing at his insides eased a little. His pulse fluttered and his stomach felt like it was turning over in his gut. Just fix it now so you won't have to fix it later. For a moment, he couldn't move so he started to picture the inner workings of the animatronics, reminding himself that they were indeed machines, powerless. Hand shaking, he slowly reached out toward the wiring that floated in the water. The material was actually soft and malleable, like string. Kenan pulled, but it was stuck between the teeth. He shut his eyes and yanked. Something had drifted out of the sea dragon. He realised it wasn't a wire, but a shoelace. He'd pulled out the little kid's shoe that was covered with black oil from Zeus's huge mouth. Ho 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 ho! <laughs> that night, Caden dreamed he was back in second grade on a field trip to an amusement park. He'd been assigned to a group with Daryl, Peter, Sally, and Tony, chaperoned by Mrs. Thompson. Once they got back to the park, the beginning of the trip had been really fun. They rode a few rides and got to play games. Caden liked the spinning cups the best. His friend Daryl liked the big swings. They each had cotton candy and a hot dog. 
He couldn't wait to tell Grams how much fun he was having. Next on the itinerary was a trip on the submarine ride. It wasn't actually a submarine, but a boat that you stepped down into, into in order to see all the underwater sea life through the viewing glass as it sailed around a large pond. Tinny music played through a speaker. Caden felt a little nervous stepping down into the glass boat. His stomach turned over like it when it was upset. His palms began to sweat, looking at the greenish, murky water surrounding the boat. He didn't feel too good about being in the boat, but he had to stay with his group. He wanted to go home. The boat rocked below his feet. Fake kelp waved from side to side in the water, but the water wasn't very clear through the viewing glass. It was cloudy and speckled with dirt. This is so cool, Daryl said, pointing all around. Isn't this cool? The other kids agreed and ooed at the little fish that swam past the glass. Caden didn't see anything cool about it at all. Daryl grabbed Caden's arm and pulled him over to the glass. Look, Caden, isn't it neat? It's like we're underwater. When I grow up, I'm going to live in a submarine. It's going to be so awesome. Do you want to live in a submarine too? Um, Caden spotted something in the cloudy water through the glass. He squinted. He watched the kelp shift back and forth. Something was moving as the boat drifted closer. Caden felt his heart pound. He pointed toward the glass. Um, his hand curled into a fist at his side. A large whale animatronic popped out through long strands of kelp. Its mouth opened super wide. Its teeth were blackened and brown. Its throat was deep and dark, and it was big enough to swallow Caden whole. Caden's breath clogged in his throat. Daryl pulled him closer to the glass, and Caden ripped his arm away and leaped back. He held his breath for so long he thought he'd pass out. He let out his breath and then sucked in a big gulp of air and released the biggest scream he'd ever shouted in his life. He screeched as if he were being attacked, tortured, murdered, like he was being eaten alive. Mrs. Thompson, Daryl, and the other kids tried to calm him down, but all he saw was the mechanical wail that ignited pure terror within him. It does sound pretty scary to be fair, like... I reckon I probably do have some kind of phobia. I, I do have a fear of the ocean. I, I'm i so bad with the ocean, honestly. I, I can't with the ocean. <laughs> There's some scary stuff down there. <laughs> There's some terribly scary stuff. Mrs. Thompson grabbed him by the shoulders. His face was pale. Oh, sorry, her face was pale. Her eyes were wide. Caden, stop this right now. Caden jerked away, screaming. He knocked into some kind of emergency switch on the wall of the boat and a loud alarm sounded over the static radio, piercing everyone's ears. The kids slapped their hands against the sides of their heads. The, ju the boat jerked and halted. The whale froze, mouth gaping, as the boat stopped. Mrs. Thompson grabbed Caden again, blocking his view of the water. Caden, please stop! You're okay! Stop screaming! Please, somebody turn off the alarm! Caden finally quieted. His entire body shook. His chest moved up and down with harsh breaths. His throat burned from screaming so loudly. Tears ran down his face and snot ran out of his nose. He slowly regained his senses, remembering where he was and what was happening. What was happening was that Daryl was pointing at him. Look, Caden Peter's pants. <laughs> the kids began to chant. Caden Peter's pants. Caden Peter's pants. Caden looked down to see a puddle at his feet as he heard the kids laughing at him. Oh my god. <laughs> right. Sorry, I, I just have to take a break from talking because uh, my throat does get very sore. And I could edit that out, but I can't be asked. <laughs> Also, it gives you an opportunity to pause, because this is a good pausing point. So, uh, if you want to go and get, like, popcorn or something, I don't know what you do. I don't know. Tell me down below how you listen to these audiobooks, because I'm actually very curious about that. Anyway. Ha 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 ha. Kanan jerked awake in his bed, covered with a sheen of sweat. His sheet was stuck to his skin, so he peeled it off and sat up. He checked to make sure he hadn't literally wet his pants, and then scrubbed at his face. Thank goodness he'd been able to... Uh, he'd been better able to control his bodily fluids. He got older. He looked at the clock. It was 3.03am. His mouth was parched, so he got up, stepped around the pile of clothes on the floor, and walked out of his bedroom and down the narrow hallway to the kitchen. He rolled his stiff neck and stretched his arms out, yawning. 
The old wooden floors creaked under his feet. Graham's place was a two-bedroom home, wallpapered with tiny pink flowers. Her furniture dated back to the 70s. The matching brown and orange couch and recliner sported knitted dollies. Now hang on a second, I have just thought of something. I have just thought of something. Um... Let me just reread this quote. The truth was, Graham's house had, has been a comfortable and safe haven for him, away from the teasing kids and the feeling of being an outsider. When he stepped inside, the outside world faded away. Wait. Wait, I missed it. Oh, no, that's... I read ahead. Oops, I'm sorry. Her furniture dated back to the 70s. There we go. That's the, that's the quote I was trying to pull. Uh, sorry for delaying, but... If, if Graham's furniture is from the 70s, wouldn't that mean we are in the 2030s? 2040s? Right? I, I think that adds up. Right? I, I don't know. Like, let me know down below if you, if you think that's accurate. But, like, I, I think that's fair. <laughs> uh, good attention to detail if that is a thing that we, that we need to find the date. Anyway. There were piles of newspapers and magazines on the floor and on the coffee table. Baskets of yarn and unfinished knitting projects were placed around the living room. Her kitchen counters were avocado green, which clashed with the yellow linoleum. Even the dishes in the cupboards were old. Sometimes Caden felt like he lived in the museum. Friends never came over to hang out, so he'd never felt embarrassed by the out-of-date decor. The truth was... Graham's house had been a comfortable and safe haven for him, away from the teasing kids and the feeling of being an outsider. When he stepped inside, the outside world faded away. Then the next day, he would have to step out again and face a different reality at school. He'd made a couple of friends over the years, both new kids, but one had moved away and the other had joined in the teasing after a while. Through the years at school, Caden had learned to disappear from his world. He found safe spaces in middle and high schools, mostly in the welding workshops or mechanics classes, places he could duck away from Dowell and his pose, in between classes and after school, until the other kids cleared out and went home. He'd never felt lonely. Being alone had become second nature to him, just like working on things that needed to be fixed. He opened the refrigerator and grabbed a chilled water bottle, twisted off the lid and guzzled down nearly half the water. He shut the fridge and turned to look at the darkened house. Funny how being alone in the dark didn't scare him one bit, and yet being underwater with machines in broad daylight could reduce him to tears. His thoughts drifted to the shoe he'd found yesterday. He'd wrapped the shoe in a plastic bag and tucked it away until the end of the shift and brought it home. He wasn't exactly sure why he'd held onto it, or why he hadn't turned it in. It was like a piece of a puzzle. He had to work out what it meant. Caden walked to the front room and found the bag he'd left on the coffee table. He turned on a light, sat down, and pulled the damp shoe out of the bag. The shoe was discoloured, but at one time could have been white. Now it was stained with oil and rust. It was small, maybe from a kid in kindergarten or first grade. That was how old he'd been when his life had changed, when his parents had disappeared. How, how could a little kid's shoe end up in a closed-off water aquarium? Why would it be in the mouth of an animatronic dragon? Did Martin Copper know about this? What's your story? He murmured out loud. Then he shook his head. It's just a shoe. He returned to the bag, turned off the light, and went back to bed. Hi, Roy. Roy was handing out... Oh, God. <coughs> a little bit of a kind of voice malfunction. Uh, <laughs> yes, I am a robot. Um, Roy was handing out two ice cream cones to a couple of kids from the ice cream booth. Hey there, Caden. What's happening? Just feeling like a cone. Free snacks was one of the few perks of this job. That sounds good to me too, he grinned. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Coming right up. Since no one else was in the line for ice cream, Roy brought out two chocolate soft serves and they sat down on either side of a picnic table. It was the middle of the week, so the park was slightly empty. He supposed the park would fill when kids got out of school. Caden had done all of his morning prep work and figured he would take some time to pick Roy's brain. Roy licked his cone with gusto. Hey Roy. Huh? So, you used to come to the park before it closed down, right? Yep. Biggest bummer when it closed. My favourite hangout spot. Yeah, you mentioned that. Why did it close all those years ago, anyhow? 
Roy frowned. Mm, not sure. A couple of rumours went around town that Mr Copper ran out of money. It was busy at the time though, always a packed park on the weekends. I mean, I, I loved the Mac Aquarium like the other kids. Must have rode Chica's ferry boats like a thousand times to get a closer look at the sea creatures. <laughs> he snorted his unique laugh. Did you or any little kids sneak over and look at the animatronics up close? Roy lifted his eyebrows and looked around to see if anyone was close by. Then he grinned. Oh yeah, I would always sneak through to the off-limits area and check out my animatronic friends. They were my friends back then anyway. I'd talk to them, and it was like they would listen, you know? Kid imagination stuff. Sure, I, I know what you mean. What about the other kids? He shrugged. They probably did. Not that I'd seen anyone. Hard to resist, you know? Those animatronics, especially Zeus, were amazing to the little kids. They were scary and cool at the same time. Then he crunched on his cone, and with a mouthful asked, Why are you asking? Just curious, Caden frowned. He guessed it was okay to share about the shoe. Found a little kid's shoe in Zeus's mouth yesterday. Roy's mouth gaped. What? Are, are you sure? Caden nodded. Yep, the strangest thing. Can't imagine how it got in there. Unless a kid snuck up on the platform and threw it in there. But it wasn't done recently. The shoe was old and falling apart. It's been there a while. Wow. Roy stared out into the distance. I wonder how it got in there. Never had the guts to climb up at the top as a kid. Hope no one got hurt. Maybe someone threw it in as a prank or something. Yeah, maybe. Caden was glad he wasn't the only one who knew anymore. But Roy's reaction had him a bit spooked. This was as serious as he thought. He raised his nearly finished cone. Well, thanks for the cone, Roy. Gotta get back to work. Yeah, see ya, buddy. A little later that day... Martin strolled over to Caden as he was rinsing down the Foxy's Island Water Slides walkway area with a water hose. Wachowski! Caden lifted his eyebrows. Yeah, boss. He crossed his arms... Oh! <coughs> he crossed his arms against his chest. What's this I hear? Oh my gosh, what is happening to my voice? <coughs> What's this I hear about a shoe in the Mech Aquarium? Dang, Roy in his big mouth. Caden scratched his head. Yeah, um, I found it in there uh, yesterday and then fished it out. You don't have to worry about it. Martin pulled at his ear. So the dragon had it? Caden nodded, turning off the water nozzle. It was an old shoe. It looked like it had been there a while. I took care of it. He squinted at him. You got rid of it? Where is it? Caden finished rolling up the water hose. Um, yeah, I got rid of it. Next time you find something, you gotta tell me. I gotta know these things. Sure. S sorry, I didn't think it was a big deal, boss. Martin rolled his shoulders. It's not. But I wanna know everything that goes on in the park. Got it! Caden straightened from putting the hose away, rubbing his chin as he nodded. How do you think a shoe got in there anyway, boss? Martin tossed his hands up. How the heck do I know? Someone must have thrown it in years ago, as a dumb joke. Teenagers were always pulling pranks around the park back then. Causing me trouble. Darn headache, I tell ya. One of the reasons why I closed. I had to hire security to stop people from sneaking in during the shutdown. I'd put in extra locks, but they would just break through. It was a friggin' mess. Now, Roy's my security when we're closed. Roy didn't really have a life outside the park, Caden realised. I was going to ask you, do you know anything about the animatronics moving... When the power's off, Martin abruptly snickered, his teeth flashed brightly. You're getting the creeps, aren't you? The what? I had text years ago, telling me the same thing, but it's just you guys getting spooked being in there by yourselves with them. He pointed a thumb toward the mech aquarium. They don't move without power, and they sure as heck ain't gonna eat. They ain't gonna eat you, kid. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I keep messing up. Kenan's cheeks heated. No, I, I know, I know. I didn't mean anything like that. Martin suddenly got serious as he pointed a finger at Caden. Just keep me in the loop on everything, Wachowski. Everything. I want to make sure this park is safe and successful. Like I told you, it's your bread and butter. Martin jerked his head in a nod. Right. Glad you're paying attention. 
Caden felt a curious tingle at the back of his neck. Sure, boss, I'll let you know everything. Everything except that they definitely move without power. No problem. Caden walked around the narrow pathway along the outside of the Mech Aquarium, checking on the animatronics. There were Zeus, the three sharks, Delilah the mermaid, Frank the diver, and Marco, the pale purple sea serpent. Where was Polo? <laughs> Unease turned to Caden's stomach. He hadn't been in the tank since Zeus' accident uh, and had no desire to go in again. Caden walked around the Mech Aquarium, trying to find Polo. Where are you, you sneaky serpent? He finally spotted the pale pink serpent, stuck between two sea rocks near the bottom. At first he thought it was just hiding, but as he moved closer, he saw that Polo was down. There was no movement, and its usually lit eyes were dead. Caden ran his hands through his hair and paced back and forth, his pulse fluttering with unease. Wait. Then he stopped and looked around. The park had a good group of visitors at the moment, he thought. Maybe he just... Wait a little while. No one would likely notice one serpent was missing. Caden Wachowski, call the front office. Eva's la- Oh my god, that's Eva. Oops. Caden <laughs> Wachowski, call the front office. Eva's loud voice rang out through the speakers across the park. <laughs> I thought it was Martin, I'm sorry. Caden <laughs> sighed. He felt like he was in high school all over again. He fished out the old flip phone Martin had given him and dialed. Yeah, Eva? Oh, hey, Caden. Roy wanted me to tell you. Polo's down. One of those sea serpents in the mech aquarium. Of course. Yeah, we'll take care of it. Thanks, Eva. Sure thing, sweetie. Um, c you can call me on this work phone, Eva, when you need something. The boss gave me one, remember? She let out a laugh. Oh, yeah, I forget sometimes. I'll try to remember the call phone. As they say... Old habits die hard. That's a weird scene. 